Today I'll share with you a story of uh, uh, an interaction between me and my mentor. Okay, this happened in Dubai, and uh, it helped me realize a lot of things about how I was my biggest enemy. And uh, you know, over the years, as I've been a coach, I've helped others realize how they themselves become their own enemy. Okay, and let me know if you can relate to it. Now, uh, you know, with my mentor, I used to literally talk to my mentor every single day for minimum an hour. Literally share with him my life, experiences, preferences, choices, you know, do's and don'ts. Okay. So now uh, he was with me when uh, I was about to get married. He was, you know, or rather, I was with him when I got divorced. I was with him when I joined a guy in partnership. And, uh, you know, I was with him when I broke off from the partnership. However, one day, I think uh, I was talking about making a major decision in my life. And uh, as usual, I was talking to him and giving him all the reasons why this was a very important decision. And there he said, Loy, can I, can I stop you here and, uh, you know, just make you aware of something? I said, yeah, go ahead. He's saying, you remember when you wanted to get married? You were telling me why you should get married. He said, yeah. He's saying, uh, you know, he told me that uh, when you wanted to get married, you gave me all the reasons you were giving me the reasons why you should get married, why she was the right girl for you, why uh, other people are wrong, and why you definitely will make it work. However, once after you got married and things are not working out, you once again came to me and you gave me all the reasons why this marriage is not going to work out why you have to break up and why other people, whatever they are saying, like stay married, why they are wrong. He's saying once again, you repeated the same pattern when you wanted to get into this business partnership. You gave me all the reasons why you should get into this partnership, why this partnership will work uh, and why other people are wrong to judge that this partnership will not work. And uh, afterwards, when it did not work and you wanted to break up, you discussed with me and you once again gave me all the reasons why this is not going to work, why other people are wrong and why you should break it up. You think, so the point I'm trying to tell you is when you want to do something, you will try to convince yourself and you'll try to convince the whole world why you have to do it. You will give justifiable reasons. But when you don't want something, you will give all the reasons and all the justifiable excuses why you don't want it or it will not work. He's saying same way now, when you are talking about this new venture, you are trying to convince me all the reasons, like 10 reasons why it will work out. I can assure you, after a few months, you'll come back to me and give me all the 10 reasons why this will not work. And that really got me thinking, you know, I was like, hmm, why do we do this? Or how many times have I done it? <coughs> you know, my mentor always had this way of making me aware. And then when I started to look around and observe not only myself, but others, I realized we all do it. For example, I'll give a simple example. If, uh, let's say, which happens every day, you speak to a Muslim and you ask him, can you give me uh, your opinion whether Islam is true or false and prove evidence, give evidence to prove the same. The Muslim will give you all the reasons why Islam is true and he'll give you <coughs> research, links, evidence, videos, 
opinions that endorse Islam as being the true religion and Allah being the only creator. Try the same with the Hindu. Hindu also will tell you why Hinduism is true, why Hinduism is good. All the links, all the uh, newspaper cuttings, in fact, for example, the cow urine, healing COVID or cow urine being good for, you know, your immune system. They will actually even search articles that have been written in Harvard, some publication, someone's opinion. Okay. I try the same with Christian. Ask Christians about Adam and Eve, about Jesus, about uh, the Trinity in one God, three people in one God. Ask them if Christianity is true. They will give you all the reasons. Now, every religion, every person who believes their religion will say, my religion is true, but those 2,999 other gods and religions are false. Only my religion is true. <coughs> Isn't that funny? It's like, because you were born into a religion, you know for a fact your religion is true. So, you know, I used to always think, if a Muslim guy was born as a Christian, wouldn't he say Christianity is true? My parents, if my parents are Mus uh, Muslims, they would say Islam is true. If a Muslim family, they were Christians, they would say Christianity is true. Now, let's leave religion aside. Look at other day-to-day -day things. When a girl falls in love with a guy and she wants to marry him, she will give you all the reasons why he's a nice guy, why he is different. A guy will also give all the reasons why this time this is true love, why this girl is different. Now, <coughs> what is the conclusion of this? How do we conclude this kind of behavior? The crux of the issue is we generally try to convince ourselves what we want. That is why sometimes when I get clients now, uh, sometimes it's very easy for me to recognize that the reason why they are speaking to me is not because they want coaching or they want proper guidance. They want validation. They want me to tell them what they want to hear. Like, for example, a girl wants to marry this guy or guy wants to marry this uh, bar girl or prostitute or she is different, like maybe she is Thai or um, uh, someone wants to get a tattoo or someone wants to be an atheist <coughs> or someone wants to, you know, drop out of school or college. They will give me all the reasons why they want to do what they want to do. They will give me all the justifiable reasons. And uh, they will say that this is why. And everything else that speaks against it, uh, they will discard it. For example, let's say a young man who wants to not study, doesn't want to study, wants to give up college. He will give you success stories of school dropouts. He will talk to you about this man dropped out of college and started a multi-billion dollar business. What are the real life skills you can get? You can't learn communication in school or college. You don't know emotional intelligence, don't know how to manage money. Uh, just because you get a degree doesn't guarantee you a job. They will give all the justifiable reasons, okay? But they'll not look at the other side, that if you don't have a degree, this is the price you have to pay. So, what I want you to keep in mind is, fine, you want to convince yourself whether A is good or B is good, whatever the case, if you have made up your mind, go ahead. But keep in mind that if there is, if you are wrong, if you are wrong, then you will pay the price for it. So that is why when I talk to my clients, I tell them, see, listen, I know your heart is set out on doing this. Suppose direction A. <coughs> but B, you're only talking about the good things, the bad things over there. Let's balance it out. Let's speak of the drawbacks of A. And, you know, flip the switch. 
plus points of A and drawbacks of A, plus points of B, drawbacks of B, without being emotional. And the biggest part of all is what is the price you will pay if you are wrong. That is why I always tell them, what if you are wrong? Because chances are, most probably, forget being wrong, chances are you may not succeed. That is why in business or relationship or marriage or uh, a new venture, the chances of it failing are very, very high. That's why, you know, when relationships, they go in the honeymoon phase, oh, I know he's different. I know it is going to work out. Yeah, until uh, it doesn't. And that is why if you see people who get divorced or people who shut down their business or people who made a bet on crypto or whatever, they believe in it so passionately. But one day when they lose, then they don't know what to say or what to do. It can be whether you love someone or you placed a big bet on your children that your children will grow up and take care of you or uh, you made a gamble, you put all your money in one thing. <coughs> Always remember, end of the day, ask yourself, if I'm wrong, what is the price I'm going to pay for it? So that, and don't be the type of person, no, no, no. I don't let doubts creep into me. I will never let negativity, like, you know, some fighters. I will never lose. I've never even entertained the thought of losing. I will achieve my dreams. I mean, but if you see boxing or any sport, the person after he loses, then they say, uh, I don't know, I'm just lost. You need to be realistic. Being practical, looking at the plus and minus, it doesn't make you positive or negative, optimist or pessimist. It makes you a realist. Anyway, <coughs> this is what I wanted to share with you. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, whether you share my point of view and if you feel something different, I'd love to hear what you have to say. And yeah, people do this also in politics. <laughs> only their party is right and only their leader is the best. Or people they even do this with their country or nationality. Alright, anyway, you guys take care. Sumi signing off. Ciao.